In 2001, a Dominican boy named Danny Almonte dominated the Little League World Series, throwing a no-hitter and perfect game in the same tournament, leading his team to win it all. Almonte's size and overall skills on the mound led people to believe he was actually older than 12 years old, which is the limit to play in Little League. Despite that belief, it was just a rumor and he dominated the tournament without any issue. The issue came later. Two other teams hired private investigators to look into this and into the ages of all the players on the Bronx team, the one Amante was on, finding nothing. No evidence of anyone being older. Officials at Little League headquarters even started looking into it a little bit just because of the rumors. Nothing. That's when reporters from Sports Illustrated went down to the Civil Records Building in Mocha, a city in the Dominican Republic, finding evidence that in 1994, Felipe Almonte, Danny's father, had registered his son's birth date as April 7th, 1987 which makes Danny 14 years old at the time of the 2001 Little League World Series. So this is all discovered, the report comes out, and a full investigation was launched by Little League. Danny's mother, Sonia, had a handwritten birth certificate saying that Danny was born in a totally different city in the Dominican, not Mocha, at a house in 1989 with the help of a midwife, and this had been registered in 2000. Both the parents continued to deny the truth, insisting their son was born in 1989, but the truth soon was confirmed. He really was born in 1987, his parents had lied to get him into the tournament, and as a result, the team had to forfeit everything. All of their records and numbers were wiped from the record books, and the team basically no longer existed in a sense. The dad, Felipe, was of course banned, but so was Rolando Paulino, the league president, because he was deemed responsible for letting it all happen due to the rules. Danny himself allegedly had no idea about the falsified documents and was cleared of any wrongdoing. Danny was basically looked at as a victim here, along with the rest of his team, and really the entire league, all victims to the parents of Danny and people who made and let this illegal thing happen. Now at the end of the day, as wild as this story is, it's still Little League Baseball. It's not like it's Major League Baseball. Something like this could never happen in Major League Baseball, a league that generates over $10 billion in revenue, right? Well, no, actually, it does happen. It's happened before, years ago, to several different players, some of which were big names, players that were able to lie about their age and got away with it until eventually having the truth come out. There's even a future Hall of Fame player who, although it has never been confirmed, is still speculated to this day to have had a false age while playing. This is is a real issue for Major League Baseball and its teams. There's more to it, and not only is it real, but it's only getting worse. Really quick, about 78% of my watch time is from people who aren't subscribed, so if you enjoy the video, consider hitting that like button and subscribing if you haven't already as it helps reach more people across YouTube and everywhere. It'll make me happy, which is not what several Major League Baseball teams are feeling right now regarding some of their international players. I recently mentioned this in a previous video, but when the Dodgers signed Adrian Beltre back in 1994, he was believed to be 16 16 years old but was really 15, with the truth coming out years later. I mention this because this is one of the age situations where a player was actually younger than originally thought, only by a year, but this is something that's happening again, with Major League Baseball also dealing with the complete opposite issue. The site The Athletic recently came out with a big report on this with tons of new details on one of the biggest sports scandals in history that's now back in a big way. It's a problem baseball had 15 to 20 years ago, where it was actually referred to as Agegate. MLB responded to this issue by establishing an investigations unit in the Dominican Republic, and since then, there had been a few instances here and there of players lying about their age, but it wasn't nearly as bad and frequent as it used to be. That is until now. Just recently, it was reported that more than 50 players also recently just had their arrangements with teams nullified. Juan Soto did everything clean as far as the process and route he took to becoming a big leader. Soto, who was born and raised in the Dominican Republic, waited until he was 15 years old to start working closely with one of the trainers who develops prospects scouted by major league teams. But for many other kids in the Dominican, they take a bit of a different, more earlier route, going to these independent baseball academies at just 13 or 14 years old. Things have since changed with the international market regarding how teams can spend on international amateur players who aren't legally allowed to sign until 16. Before 2017, teams didn't have much of a cap on how much they can spend on international players, spending more without much care for the penalties that came with it. Because of this, in 2017, MLB got more strict on it, implementing a cap or a limit on how much teams can spend on international young players. As a result, teams have been reaching unofficial deals with players that include incredibly young ages. The point teams might make is that if that young player doesn't agree to an unofficial deal now, the money might be gone by the time they are 16 and eligible to actually sign, and so it started to become normal for prospects to start
start committing to teams at just 14 years old. And after this handshake agreement was set, the player would then disappear from the market with it also being reported that teams are said to have pledged contracts to players even as young as 12. And it's also become normal for trainers in the Dominican to have 10 and 11 year olds practicing and staying at their academies. Longtime player agent Ulises Cabrera, along with many others, have claimed there to be corruption in the system, a corrupted system that includes trainers paying MLB teams under the table, something that's become more common now than in the past. There's been talk over the years of a draft potentially being implemented, an international draft, but Cabrera doesn't believe that'll fix anything about the system, a system that, according to him and others who know what's going on, has scouts influencing the player they want's trainer to sell a percentage of the kid's bonus to another trainer from the scout's own region. The player then transfers to that trainer and commits to signing with the team the scout is representing, often for an inflated bonus, and by the end, the scout is compensated by the new trainer, sometimes in the form of cash, other times with housing arrangements, vehicles, or other material goods, with a former Phillies minor league hitting coach calling it a mafia. Cabrera and others believe MLB has just tolerated everything as partly a way to convince teams and trainers that a draft is the best way to solve many of the issues, something the league of course has denied. Cabrera did suggest MLB should really hold these teams accountable for what they're doing, at least way more frequently. They have in the past, like when they penalized the Red Sox in 2016 for orchestrating international package deals, which is when they funnel money to highly regarded players through the signings of lesser ones. And in November of 2017, MLB actually banned a former Braves general manager for life after the team was found guilty of several violations in the international market, which led to 13 Braves prospects getting their contracts voided, while also preventing them from signing two high-profile players the Braves had been expected to sign and put strict limits on how much the team could spend internationally for three signing periods. What a lot of teams have been doing, simply because they're basically allowed to under a system which is looked at as a failed one, is taking away their verbal agreements with the players, forcing some of these kids to have to sign for less money than originally agreed upon if they want to sign at all. Eddie Fontana, who's a longtime trainer based in the Dominican Republic, had a first-hand experience of this back in the 2020-2021 signing period, where one of his players committed to a team for over a year for $1 million dollars only for that team to later inform the player less than a month before the original signing period was supposed to open that its international budget had been slashed. Fontana was fortunately able to get that player signed with another team, but for less than half of the original amount he was promised from the other team. And many times a player is forced to go back out on the market with a reduced value being 16 years old. The emphasis on signing young players has gotten so big that according to Juan Soto, he says that if you're 16, teams don't even want to see you. The the reality is, Latin American prospects are exploited in a corrupt system that does not treat them the same as the prospects in the United States, Canada, or Puerto Rico, and it's not stopping. Like I said earlier, it was just reported that more than 50 players recently had their arrangements with teams nullified. 17 industry officials that are anonymous, which include front office executives and player agents, have told The Athletic that deals players had in place for the current signing period, which began on January 15th as well as handshake agreements for the future future have both fallen apart because the league or the teams themselves found reason to doubt a player's age. Many teams have recently found out that a player they were either interested in or had reached a verbal agreement with was older than they originally thought. The teams who had this happen to them include the Astros, Royals, Twins, Mets, and A's, all teams that declined to say anything on the situation. And according to multiple executives around the sport, the Astros seem to have gotten the worst of it, losing three players because of age fraud. One player who the Red Sox were interested in is is now believed to be six years older than he was presented as. He was previously not going to be eligible to be signed until 2026 because that's when he'd be 16, with his current age now believed to be 21. Another player who the Yankees were in on, reportedly one of the best, is now having his age question. The overall age fraud situation has surged as of late, and many believe a reason may be because international amateur players started figuring out what these MLB investigators are looking for when determining the age and confirming it, and are now getting away with lying again again easier. There are also believed to be specific trainers out there who are more likely to represent a player with a false age, so that's something teams have to keep an eye on, knowing
modeling which trainers cheat a lot. This has all mostly been happening in the Dominican Republic compared to other Latin countries. A country like Venezuela, for example, is not as frequent to have age fraud. And this really is a massive deal considering the difference in money players get and teams give out depending on the age. Money that can change a young kid's life, any young kid's life, but especially one in the Dominican Republic, a country that has over a quarter of its population living in poverty. For example, teams will give a 16-year-old player one and a half million dollars to sign him, but when it later comes out that that said player is actually 19, the team still might like the player, but they wouldn't have given him nearly as much money if they knew his real age. If he is indeed 19 and they knew that, they would have given him maybe 25 or 50 grand. That's it. Of course, an extreme drop off from the one and a half million. Because of this, it's pretty obvious why players will lie. Albert Pujols, a legendary hitter who's expected to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, has been accused of lying about his age and being older than he's always been looked at while he played. According to ex-Marlins president David Sampson, whose team considered signing Pujols back in December of 2011, before he agreed to his big deal with the Angels, said that no one in baseball believed Pujols was telling the truth about his age when he signed the Angels contract, saying that he and the Marlins knew he would be unproductive, that he was not the age that he said he was, and they had all of the information. It's never been confirmed, but we do know about a couple other big league players who did lie about their age. Former left-handed pitcher Wandy Rodriguez not only lied about his age, but lied about his identity, taking on a new one and calling himself Any Rodriguez, which was his friend's name, who was two years younger. Because of this, Wandy being supposedly 17 was way more attractive of a player than if he told the truth that he was 19. Miguel Tejada, a really good and powerful powerful hitter, someone who won the MVP award with Oakland, also lied about being 17 when he was really 19 when he signed with the A's back in 1993. The age fraud situation has become a massive thing, yet it is also just one part of the overall failed and corrupt system, with trainers sometimes reportedly illegally taking amounts of money from these players. An unnamed international scout had this to say, quote, these kids are 12 to 13 effing years old, and their agents are shaking hands on $4 million plus agreements. It's fair to assume that creates additional pressure on agents to make younger and younger kids appear more and more advanced over their classmates. With that scout also adding on that it doesn't feel like anything is slowing down at all. And there is currently a flyer circulating for a showcase of 2030 eligible kids. Kids who are just 10 and 11 years old. It has become absolute chaos with clearly no end in sight unless MLB takes action. Whether it's disciplining all who are contributing to these illegal activities, putting more resources into seriously cracking down on these issues and looking at it way closer, having an international draft, all the above, or other solutions, it's clearly a big problem and it's affecting the entire league. To have more than 50 players getting their deals ripped apart because of this, players these teams originally thought would play an impact for their organization, is no joke. That's real, and it's very clear that the most corrupt system in baseball has and is continuing to only get much worse. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you soon.